Do you remember that? Jesus was talking about this time. Listen to it again. Therefore, behold, I will allure her. He's talking about a time when the people of Israel are going to be open to the Messiah. And he is going to, with the message of the gospel, allure them into the wilderness to walk away where it looks like there's provision, all the things that have their heart. And he's going to hide them in the wilderness. And he's going to feed them for three and a half years. 144,000. I will give her vineyards from there. And the valley of Achor as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth. As in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. Now, this, this valley of Achor runs in the area from Jericho to Bethel. The word Achor in Hebrew means trouble. It's the valley of trouble. And he says that he is going to take them through the valley of trouble because they're going to be driven out of Israel by the Antichrist. There's coming another holocaust. Millions of Jews are going to die. But the 144,000 who bent the knee to Jesus, he is going to protect them and he's going to take them right through the valley of trouble. This is the place where the children of, e of Israel moving into the land under Joshua. He, well, he goes on. And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband, and no longer call me my master. And that word master has a very evil connotation in Hebrew. It means something really terrible. You won't call me something terrible to be filled. Our relationship will be so close, you'll call me your husband. Now this valley of Achor, they know very well what he's talking about. This was the place of punishment. Do you remember the story of Joshua when the children of Israel first came into the promised land? And when they came into the promised land, one of the things that was told to them was when you take Jericho and when you take all the cities of that land, you are to keep nothing for yourself. Nothing. It's all to go to the house of God. However, there was a man that was in the army of Israel that was with a small group that attacked a city called Ai. And what happened was, when they were planning the battle, a group of the commanders of the soldiers said, Ah, oh, don't send the whole army, Joshua. This is a little town. It's a burg. We'll take it. And when they got there, they began to plunder the area of Ai, and one of the commanders took a garment and he hid it in his own tent. And you know what happened? The children of Israel got whipped. And, they, and the leaders, Joshua, got on his face before God, and God told him there's sin in the camp. Somebody took something that belonged to God. And they went through, and they cast lots, and they found the soldier. They raided his tent. They found what was in it. That's why it's called the Valley of Achor. The trouble wasn't another army that was too strong. The trouble was somebody that made a decision that they were not going to handle their possessions in the manner in which God prescribed. Take a hint. For I will take from her mouth the names of the Baals. I'm going to deliver those Jews that are in the wilderness. 
and I'm going to put a love for Jesus where they won't want any other God. And they shall be remembered by their name no more. In that day I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, and with the creeping things on the ground. Bow and sword of battle I will shatter from the earth to take, make them lie down safely. You know where it's, what it's talking about? The millennial reign of Jesus. When everything will be set straight. I will, I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will, be, uh, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice, in kindness and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. It shall come to pass in the day that I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth. The earth shall answer with grain, with, with new wine, with oil. They shall answer Jezreel. In other words, the place that was so horrible, where everything had gone wrong, where the heads of 70 young men were severed to settle a political battle. In that place, God's saying, I'll, you, you pray to the Baal, you sacrifice your children, hoping for favorable weather and good crops. It says, I'll give you new wine. I'll give you the crops that you were looking for. I'll speak to the weather and it'll cooperate so that you'll have what it is you want and you'll have a pure and a clear heart before God. And folks, the Jews don't have that yet. It's coming. Then I will sow her for myself in the earth and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. Then I will say to those who were not my people, remember he said, they aren't going to be my people anymore. I'm going to say to those who went into captivity, who they tried to breed out of existence, those who were taken captives and removed from the land, I am going to say to those that I cut off for a time, saying, you're not my people, you are my people. And they shall say, you are my God. So the next time you hear somebody say, oh no, all that stuff, all the promises are for the church. That's why they don't understand the book of Revelation. Because they don't understand that God made promises to the Jews and he's going to fulfill it to the Jews. And he's made promises to us and he's going to fulfill them to us. Third chapter, then the Lord said to me, go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committed, has committed adultery, just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel who look to other gods and love the raisin cakes of the pagans. In other words, you're gonna go take a woman that you know is gonna step out on you, just like I took Israel and I knew they were gonna step out on me. So I bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver. When you got into big financial trouble in Israel, one of the ways you could get out is to sell yourself as a slave. The average price of a slave was 30 shekels of silver. Hosea went to the slave market knowing that his wife was there. He bought her for 15. You know why? Because her sin had so beaten her up that her body was racked she had lost all her beauty. She looked like a wreck. He bought her at a discount price. He paid off her debt, but he bought her in love. Everybody thought she was worthless. Yeah, she discounted. Not Jose. He obeyed God. He went on. And I said to her, you shall always be with me many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be with you. In other words, I don't care that your beauty's gone, that you're beat up, 
your body's racked. I didn't buy you back to be some manual labor servant. I bought you, brought you back to be my wife. To live with me as the wife. And I will treat you like a godly husband. You know what we call that, friends? The two things that God told Paul, or Paul told God, they're all in this, that Paul told Timothy and Titus, grace and mercy be to you, and it will bring peace. Grace means getting favor you don't deserve. Mercy means going to court, being found guilty, and then the judge says that he's dropping all charges. And that's exactly what Hosea says to Gomer after all her harlotries. He says, I'm letting it go. I'm forgiving. And now I'm going to treat you like the husband that God says I ought to be. So I brought her, bought her for myself for 15 shekels of silver and one and a half homers of barley, animal feed. And I said to her, you shall stay with me many days. You shall not play the harlot, nor shall you have a man. So too will I be toward you. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without king or prince. Uh, folks, since they were taken into captivity, how many kings have there been of Israel? Zero. Zero. Many days without a king. Many days without a king or prince, without sacrifice of, of a sacred pillar, without ephod or larathim. You know what the ephod is? It's the chest plate that was worn by the high priest to make the sacrifices. He's saying, you're going to go, Israel, for many days where you will not have a descendant of King David on the throne and you will go for many days where there will be no sacrifice in a temple. Has that happened or has it not? You bet it has. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. He's saying that after all those things happen, just like Revelations tells us, their hearts will be toward the Messiah, the son of David. Amen? He tells them, and their hearts are going to be turned to Jesus as Messiah, the son of David. They shall fear the Lord and his goodness in Last two words, catch it, the latter days. Mm -hmm. This isn't just Old Testament background stuff. This is a newspaper from today telling us Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. As surely as all these things were true in history, the prophecies yet to be fulfilled are going to happen. You know, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus in the way that we're talking about, intimately, he's not just some thought that hangs out there. You know, some people say, well, I believe that Jesus was here. The devil does too, and it doesn't do him any good. Faith in Jesus means believing that when he died on that cross, he died for every sin you ever have, every sin that may be in your life now, and every sin you will ever commit. You believe that, and you have no plan B. If Jesus doesn't stand up for you, you're lost. Done. Finished. Believe me, I believe that in my life. I'm worthy of punishment. 
I'm worthy of a sentence of death. But when Jesus went to that cross, the gavel dropped. God is the almighty judge saying, case dismissed. And if you believe that and believe that Jesus proved that he could raise us from the dead because he was raised from the dead, and you believe your sins are forgiven, you're saved. It's over. You will never face the judgment of God. You're just going to a reward ceremony. That's all. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus in this way, don't leave here until you come and talk with me. You can walk right out of this building and know that everything is right between you and God. One announcement. We're going to have a baptism service. And at any rate, uh, if you've never been baptized, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. We'd be happy to include you. Uh, we're trying to make arrangements for a spot right now. We'll get an announcement out for a date, hopefully by next Sunday. And everybody's invited. It's a public statement by somebody being baptized that their life now identifies with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So please, uh, if, if you need to be baptized, come see me. And at any rate, uh, we'll make arrangements to include you as well. All right? Let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this word. Thank you for Hosea and his faithfulness. Lord God, please help us to recognize that we are in the last days, the last hours and Lord, things are creeping up fast. Help us, Lord, recognize that everything you've given us, you've given us our homes, you've given us air to fill our lungs to make our voices work, you've given us transportation. Lord, everything, that the very, the very paycheck we get, 